Um, it's going to save the scene. That's what I remember. Influences. Right, so let's have a look at a bit of rendering. I don't need, I think, the, the graph anymore. Let's just pull this back out. Um, I'm just going to make a plane to put underneath it. And let's go to this so we can sort of zoom in a bit. Might make this square, this render. Don't need all this extra. We'll come and look at those in a minute. Um, probably zoom in a bit more. Just going to open up my attribute editor and I'm just going to select the camera. And even though it's just the perspective, I'm just going to just bring that down a bit so we can see what we're going to render. So let's bring that up a bit. And I'm just going to make a sky, physical sky, I think. Save that. Open up Arnold Render View. And one more job I want to do is I just want to get rid of this directional light, which I'm not going to bother with. Uh, and let's just hit play. Let's see what happens. So having a think, it's exporting the Arnold scene. Might give it a quick pause. There we go. Um, so that wasn't too long. So um, that's 1k squared, it took 47 seconds, it's not too bad, a bit noisy. Oh, sorry, I've got that one. I'm just gonna re-render that now. Uh, let's get rid of that. Let's pause this while it redoes it. Right, so that's rendered. I mean, it's not massively detailed, this. This is quite you know spongy looking, and, and I did do it at quite a low resolution, um, in, in so much that it only really took about 15 minutes to simulate 100 frames. Um, but it's not too bad. I mean, it's for what, what it is, it's, it's looking okay. Um, just to sort of clarify sort of the difference, um, if I just stop that render. I've got here, where is it? Uh, one I did before. Um, and this took, I think, somewhere around the region, about four and a half hours to sim. And it took about five hours, maybe six hours to render. Um, but you can see it's a lot more detailed and it's got a lot going on. Um, so for a 10 minute sim, that's not too bad. Um, let's just get rid of this, hide, uh, not hide the light, uh, it doesn't really matter to do that. Um, let's turn off lights, that's what I want to do, there we go. Uh, so. I mean, if you pull, push that back, say you've got, you know, a cityscape, smoke coming up in the background from something, and you hit render on that, it's not going to be too bad. So obviously, you know, it's all in relation to, uh, you know, where he's going to be in your scene, how close you are to going to be to it. Um, you know, that probably even there is maybe not that great, not too bad. Um, 
but anyway, let's have a quick look at some of the settings. Not too close. There we go. So let me can I select that in the viewport? No, I can't. Let me just oops, bring this in a bit. There we go. So let me just stop that and go to our standard volume. So as we saw before, we can still play around with some of these settings in here. So we can crank up the density, and you can see I get thicker, darker smoke. Um, we can play around with some of the colours of it. We get a bit purplier. Um, let's play around with the weight of that. See, so it makes it sort of black and dark. Big thick dark smoke. Um, and I think if we do that, I'll make it darker that way. If we go that way, I'll make it lighter. Oops. Not too much. Um, so you can do things like that. It's a bit weird looking, but you know, it's, it's not too bad. Um, and we'll go back to four for that, maybe. Could play around with the transparency, make it more wispy. So you've still got these sort of post um, abilities to play around with it a bit, and it does render. I mean, if you've if you ever tried to render anything in like mental ray that was a fluid, just rendering this would have taken about two hours. Um, so it does render really quick. Arnold's really good for this. Um, so let's just have a quick look at some of these settings um, that can have an effect. So if we go into our, so the first one is Sky Dome, Shadows, take that up to two, maybe volume samples up to three as well, and just get a bit less noise in there. Um, I might just zoom in a little bit. And let's just do that. So just looking at that bit. I'll turn that off now and just zoom into that. So, <clears throat> so if I took that down to one, you'll just see it be a little bit noisier. And then if you put it up to three. We'll get a little bit. Um, the big thing that can make quite a lot of difference to these renders um, is let me move this down here a bit where it's darker. Is in ray depth we have a volume uh, setting. So ray depth is basically how many um, how many iterations of bounce will we have so at the moment you get like default on this is one and two for transmission it's slightly different it's how many transparent objects it will go through before it returns black um, or whatever color you decide is going to be your background color at the moment this is set to eight so volume is set to zero by default if you just even set it to one you can see already this gets a lot more full of light because it's sampling the light going through it more <clears throat> one of the problems with this is that you do get these sort of nice sort of soft bounce round light renders as you can see here it's a lot more sort of soft and volumey but at an expense of they take a lot longer to render um, the more you crank it up oops uh, let's move up to that bit, it's got a bit more shadow in it. But you can see it's going to take a lot longer now. Just really having to think about that. So that can affect the look quite a lot, but it will make your renders go a lot longer. 
and it's not necessarily needed that much really I mean you can see it sort of can make it go a little bit weird especially these low res ones let's put it over there and see what happens but you do get this sort of nice light through the thin bits so it's a sort of and obviously you could then go back to the smoke one maybe go up to say six like that or maybe ten where you're going to bring back some of this density but you're still getting this sort of nice light travelling through it um, but as I say make sure that renders really long <coughs> excuse me so um, apart from is there anything I think that's pretty much it for volume rendering yeah um, you can apply motion blur to these things um, I often find that when you put motion blur on sort of explosions and stuff it just makes them sort of, sort of lose all the impact of them so um, be, be wary of that um, let's just do I'm just going to bring those back down to zero let me see it's all right dark that went already maybe one and Um, you can put a colour into the transparency as well, as I remember. You can see in sort of transparent areas, as it gets more transparent, you're going to get more of this colour going into it. Uh, let's just do that. So you get a weird greeny. <clears throat> but that can be quite good for if you're doing things like nebulas. If you, if you get that way inclined. Anyway, so to pause it and let that finish. So just rendered that with one sample of the uh, ray depth and the volume. Um, it was two minutes and 39. Without it, it was a minute. So you're sort of one and a half times longer there. Um, anyway, so that's that.